It's Adam Świeżyński from uh, uh, Stefan uh, from uh, Stefan Wyszyński University in Warsaw, uh, Institute of Philosophy, and the title of the presentation is "How much philosophy is there in astrobiology?" Uh, please, Adam, the space is yours. Thank you very much. I start my presentation. Yes, perfect. I hope you can see that. Yes, everything is visible. Okay, so my uh, presentation is typically philosophical. I try to consider how much philosophy is there in astrobiology. Uh, the plan of my presentation is as follows. First, I'd like to say something about astrobiology and philosophy. Uh, after that, about uh, two kinds of philosophy connected with astrobiology. I mean philosophy of astrobiology and astrobiophilosophy. And in conclusion, I try to say something about the uh, relation between astrobiology and astrobiophilosophy. So, uh, the title question, how much philosophy is there in astrobiology, can be treated analogously to the question, how much politics in, is there in football, uh, a current actual topic in the context of ongoing World Cup and the various controversies surrounding it. Of course, FIFA officials will convince uh, everyone that football is free of politics, but we know how much such assertions are worth. Uh, regarding my topic, it would see that astrobiology is replacing the old philosophical, purely theoretical inquiries, as is now marking the transition from philosophical to scientific arguments on the subject. Uh, thus, it is easy to adopt such a perspective on astrobiology that uh, considers it's philosophically pure and completely eliminates philosophical issue regarding its research subject. This, however, is not the case in my opinion. I will try to argue that the modern development of astrobiology uh, first does not eliminate philosophical issues related to the origin existence and nature of life in the universe. And secondly, that astrobiology itself, uh, similarly like other scientific disciplines, uh, is in many ways entangled with philosophy. And this is not uh, at all a harmful situation for astrobiology. Of course, unlike uh, the situation of football's entanglement with politics, which can ever be distracted for this kind of sport. Uh, first, I'd like uh, to make some termo terminological distinctions and put them in order. Uh, I will begin with the term uh, astrobiology. Astrobiology aims to research universal phenomena on a cosmic scale, that is, uh, first of all, life in general as a universe phenomenon in the sense of a span of our universe uh, and all the detailed issues related to it. But why, we, uh, why, uh, why, why do we actually use the term astrobiology instead of term biology? Do we know any um, other biology besides biology uh, that describes the world of living organisms on our planet? Of course not. We use the term astrobiology uh, stretching the term biology from the earthly scale to the cosmic scale. Uh, the idea, therefore, is to generalize and unify our scientific knowledge of life, its nature and the process leading to its origin, development and spread in space. Uh, this situation means that, first, uh, life is treated not as something unique and one-off, but as a universal property of the universe. Uh, the second, we extrapolate our knowledge from earthly scope, or possibly from other fragments of uh, the universe under research, to the cosmic wide scale. And three, we treat the matter as having the capacity for self-organization and for development uh, that leads to a gradual increase in its complexity. Uh, the first claim has a character of a philosophical assumption or postulate in the field of epistemology, 
since it states that the search for life in the universe makes sense and if there is life beyond the earth we should be able to find out about it the second theorem sets the most general methodological framework for conducting astrobiological research in the uh, search for life we must apply the knowledge acquired in previous scientific activities conducted primarily on the earth and the third expression is a claim of an ontological nature and concerns the essential property of material substance of the universe as a whole, which explains the fact of the appearance of life. So we can distinguish at least three philosophical themes that arise in connection with astrobiology. I mean, epistemology of astrobiology, methodology of astrobiology and astrobiological ontology. Uh, the epistemology and methodology of astrobiology um, can be generally called the philosophy of astrobiology. Uh, astrobiological ontology, on the other hand, I propose to call uh, astrobiophilosophy. To all this can be added the whole area of ethics, which is a significant field of philosophy, of course. Indeed, Every human activity generates questions of an ethical nature. So also scientific research conducted within the framework of astrobiology uh, will raise ethical questions related, for example, to the use of space resources, possible continuation of life or funds spent, uh, spent on various research programs. However, uh, ethical questions I do not want to address here I only mentioned then as an important issue uh, of a philosophical nature uh, that demands consideration in connection with astrobiology. Now I turn to the philosophy of astrobiology. The philosophy of astrobiology can be understood analogously to any other philosophy of natural sciences, such a philosophy of physics, philosophy of cosmology or philosophy of biology, etc. In general, it is a matter on, of defining and characterizing astrobiology's epistemological and methodological status. This status is determined by the formal and material object. Uh, the method matched to the object of research, the conceptual framework, and uh, the degree of autonomy from other sciences. Uh, I do not have time to discuss each of these elements in more detail, so I'll limit myself only uh, to the fact that there are assumptions of a philosophical nature. Uh, and as example, to illustrate the initial metaphysical assumptions present in astrobiology, we can mention the assumption of the uniformity of nature, which allows us to claim that laws of nature, or laws of physics or chemistry do not change over time. That is, uh, for example, the law of gravity, gravity worked the same three billion years ago as it does today, and the properties of water in primordial ocean were the same as in modern oceans. Uh, there are also epistemological assumptions about the knowability of the world and conviction about the unity and limits of our knowledge. These philosophical assumptions are not examined by astrobiologists, nor, they, uh, nor do they become philosophers because, the, because they explicitly make these types of valid philosophical assumptions. Uh, their verification is done indirectly through the success of research founded on these assumptions and through various interpretive procedures. Uh, now, astrobiophilosophy. Um, astrobiophilosophy or astrobi astrobiological ontology, which I propose, uh, should take up from an ontological perspective such problems as the essence of life, origin of life, or evolution of life. In this regard, the subject matter for, of astrobiology and astrobiophilosophy is the same. Animate nature, its origin and evolution. But the aspect explored and methods used are different. 
important is that uh, the starting point for astrobiophilosophy should be the findings derived from astrobiology. Thus, it is about the philosophical entanglements, conditions, and implications of these findings. Within the conceptual framework of astrobiophilosophy, we can consider uh, various models for explaining life processes uh, proposed by mechanisms, uh, uh, vitalism, uh, uh, reductionism, or, and holism, and as well as many other detailed explanatory hypotheses. As an example uh, concerning astrobiophilosophical issues, we can mention the case of the process of abiogenesis, that is the abiotic origin of living organism. Uh, from, the, uh, from an astrobiological perspective, uh, today we should speak of cosmic abiogenesis, that is the process of the emergence of life through gradual prebiotic evolution, which is common to the whole universe. Uh, taking into account the content of the various contemporary theories of abiogenesis, it is possible to distinguish three basic types of philosophical layer present in the basis of scientific views, and therefore it is possible to propose three varieties of abiogenesis theories. Uh, first one is meta-informational abi abiogenesis. Uh, this group of theories uh, refer to some uh, form of universal integrative principle or a law governing the course of all processes in the universe uh, or uh, assume the eternal existence of so-called biological information. The second group is mechanistic eventist abiogenesis. These are theories based on the assumption of the accidental emergence of the first living particle due to a, a happy coincidence of natural circumstances and physico physico chemical regularities, which action in uh, circumstances lucky for the emergence of life resulted in its appearance. And third group is abiogenesis as a self-organization of matter. These are uh, theories that adopt an evolutionary understanding of the formation of qualitatively new systems and point out the regularities that guide the process of their development, among which the natural tendency of matter to self-organize into increasingly complex structures is decisive. The issue of the philosophical um, aspects of astrobiology mentioned above uh, is often framed in the light of the belief that mature science should be free for of philosophical considerations. Meanwhile, the very initiation of uh, the scientific research of biogenesis represented uh, a significant philosophical breakthrough in two fundamental aspects. In the ontological aspect, it required breaking with the conception of matter or as a passive substance and recognizing its dynamic and active character. In its epistemological and methodological aspects, it marked a move away from the pattern of science associated with classical physics and towards those proposed by evolutionary biology. As a consequence of this fact, the fundamental ontological assumptions in modern astrobiological research are, uh, are the first, the uh, autodynamism of matter, uh, the second, the holistic view of nature as a system composed of interrelated and interacting elements, and the third, uh, the historical view of the evolutionary process uh, taking into account diversity and variability of evolutionary factors and mechanisms. Thus, it can be concluded that a mainstream of modern research on origin of life is the belief, consciously on something unconsciously adopted by researchers, that life is a natural emergent property of matter. The consistent development of this conviction is essential uh, from the point of view of astrobiology, 
uh, as it is a fundamental premise of the research of biogenesis, which presence contradicts the claim of astrobiology as a science without any philosophy. The continue, continuity theorem, which is a consequence of, of accepting the idea of self-organization of matter, is an ontological assumption and is essential for the scientific study of the origin of life. On its basis, we can derive the principle of continuity, okay, uh, which is methodolo methodolog methodological in nature. However, it is possible to apply the methodological principle of continuity, but not accept the ontological claim of continuity. Uh, so I skip some part of my uh, presentation and conclusion astrobiology and astrobiophilosophy. As you can see on this scheme, uh, we have two layer, empirical one, theoretical one and ideal level. And as you see, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, some part which is strictly philosophical one, I mean this ideal level and which is uh, uh, um, and the one which is uh, strictly empirical one. And we have uh, a theoretical, uh, theoretical level, which is, of course, uh, um, some part of astrobiology, but uh, which is not uh, um, purely, purely uh, um, uh, empirical one. This is uh, uh, um, the level uh, when meet our empirical findings from cosmology, uh, astrophysics, uh, physics, chemistry, and so on with philosophical ideas which are uh, necessary to construct uh, with, uh, um, from, from these findings the uh, theoretical part of astrobiology. Uh, thus, the specification of philosophy of astrobiology and astrobiophilosophy alongside astrobiology means that the modern development of astrobiology uh, first does not eliminate philosophical issues related to the origin, existence and nature of life in the universe. And secondly, that astrobiology itself, like other scientific disciplines, uh, is in many ways entangled with philosophy. Thank you for attention. Thank you, Adam, for your uh, interesting talk about philosophy. I'm not a specialist in philosophy, but it was really nice to to hear something uh, something new for me. I'll uh, have time for one, maybe two short uh, questions. Uh, Priya, uh, thank you for your uh, very expensive, uh, extensive uh, talk. I have a question as a philosopher. How would you define life? Oh my God, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a hard question. Yeah. Crucial question. Of course, in philosophy, it, uh, I can define uh, the life, but I can do that only in the frame, uh, in uh, some uh, philosophical context. I mean, some um, uh, particular philosophical view of the world, for example, if I would like to uh, define the life in the frame of Thomistic philosophy, I can say uh, that life is a same kind of existence uh, which is uh, uh, able to uh, make uh, um, uh, in a move, in a move. Uh, because in Thomistic philosophy we have a uh, distinction between inner move and outside move. Inner move is typical for, uh, uh, for the um, being which are alive. So in the frame of some kind of philosophy we can define, uh, define uh, what is life, but we must remember that first it is philosophical definition which is uh, different from a uh, scientific one. And uh, because in philosophy, we need to define the essence of life, not the process of life. And uh, of course, uh, I must use some special particular concept of philosophy.
Okay, uh, I think I think it's 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 okay. Uh, and, uh, I don't see any any other questions that uh, we probably uh, should finish, especially that we are after the after the time. And uh, thank you, Adam, for your presentation again.